Oh, do I got an episode. Today we're talking all about wiring. Okay, I just wanna clear something up right away. Before we get started, you should always check with your local electrical board or also you can check the RVIA for what they would recommend you put in your house. All these products that we'll be talking about today are RVIA approved and the methods of installation and what the proper electrical amperage rating for every wire and thing that you put in your house, you should always double check and do your load calculations. Okay, let's get started. Let me clear some of this out of the way. First thing we're gonna talk about is the electrical panel. This is the cover. It goes on here like this. Take it off. And we got a lot of components inside here. Now one of the special things about an electrical panel such as this is the fact that you are gonna get low voltage and high voltage circuits out of here. On this side we have our low voltage panel which is rated to, I believe on this one it's 55 amps. And that's gonna handle all of your low voltage circuits, your lighting, your low voltage water pump, your tank monitoring sensors, your CO2 detectors, all the different things that require 12 volts can be accommodated right here. And this panel is made by Wafco and we love them. This is a really nice panel. And if you want the model number, let's read it off real quick. It's a WF-9560. Okay. Now the cool thing about this is it accommodates square D breakers. So the breakers that you find at your normal home store, they snap in here on the high voltage side. And then this is where all your high voltage circuits for your, for your outlets and your AC unit and maybe an electric water heater or a hot plate or whatever it is that you're going to have on high voltage, that's going to accommodate on this side. It's a very condensed way of distributing the electric to your house. I strongly recommend this style of panel. Okay. Along with that panel, I see a lot of goofy ways of getting power to the house, which is why I wanted to bring up this system. This is a standard 50 amp plug that you would find on any boat or RV trailer or a tiny house, at least our tiny houses. Again, I've seen everything under the sun of how to, how, uh, how to get power to your house and they're all just, I don't know, it's just not that safe not as safe as using one of these. Now this mounts to the outside of the house. You open this up, your power wires go through the back here, and then it goes to the panel. This cover then slides over those connections. You got a flip lid on the outside for weather tightness. But the cool thing is, is this power cord. This plug right here, this right here, is a standard outlet at every RV park and anywhere that the truck stops, anywhere you're going to need to plug in your house, this is going to be able to be found. Some of the other goofy ways that people hook up their houses, you can't take them anywhere. There's nothing you can do with it. And then the other side is this big honking plug and it's going to go in here like a puzzle and lock in. And then for additional tightness, you're going to have this collar ring. I'm sorry, but this is not going anywhere. And this is absolutely the way that you should be hooking up your tiny house. Then when you want to leave, this cord goes like this. This, see it's a really tight fit. But when this disconnects, then this closes on your house. Coil this up, and put it away. And that's how you should be bringing power into your tiny house. All right, let's get into some of this cool stuff. So. This is a pretty standard bus bar by Blue Sea Systems. Now they build a lot of components for boats. Now we like boat hardware when it comes to wiring a tiny house because we know that it can handle moisture really well and you're not going to have longevity and not a lot of failure or any kind of problems. So one end goes onto here, then you have another black cable comes off of here, wires into your panel. The other side is going to go to a battery much similar to this one. But the reason we put a battery in like this is this acts like a sponge. So when that inverter inside that panel is, is charging all your components and things like that, 
sometimes there's over it produces too much electricity so by using a battery like this it stabilizes the electrical system and acts like a sponge and really keeps the voltage at a very very consistent level and when you're on the road and you're not plugged in and you're cruising down the road and you're like oh crap I forgot something inside my house you can open the door and turn the lights on without plugging your house in and you're gonna have all the low voltage lighting which I'll get to in a second so so that's how all this works now if you decide that you want to put these batteries inside your house there's one other thing you're gonna definitely need and that's one of these this is a vented battery box comes with these hose mabobbers and You'll attach one on the bottom of the box, drill a hole through your floor, that goes down into the floor, and then you got this guy that goes on top, you got some instructions and some gasket material to go around there, then this guy goes on top of here with the battery inside, and then another vent tube, we'll use this one, another vent tube goes up the top and out the wall. Why do we need to do this? Well, for a couple of different reasons. These batteries can off gas. Not a lot, but every once in a while you get a bad egg and they'll, they'll create some off gassing. So what this does is, it's gonna take fresh air in from the outside and it's gonna bring it in and it's gonna shoot it out that hole out the bottom. And that's gonna make sure that none of those harmful gases that could come from a battery enter into your house if you decide to keep your battery inside. Now on most of our houses we do install a battery inside the home for a number of different reasons. One reason is, is it's good to keep it at a nice solid temperature and we feel by putting them inside the house we can accomplish that as opposed to putting them on the tongue. Now <clears throat> that kind of handles the battery box. Very important if you're putting the battery inside the house. The other thing too is with the hole out the bottom, if the battery was to ever explode, all those harmful acids and things, they'll go right out the bottom. All right, we've dealt with that. Now, let's get into more, some more fun stuff. Here's another thing really quick. This is a pigtail. If you're at a location that might not have a full hookup, you can use something like this plug it into your house, that same kind of outlet, and then you've got a normal standard 20 amp electrical plug on the other end, which is not gonna give you your full amperage, but at least you'll be able to power some of your things and get things running. Now this has been sitting out here for a while. Let's talk about this. This is our tank monitoring system made by Micro Monitor. This is pretty cool. This will monitor the battery and any holding tanks if you have them. Also, this has a built-in switch, which I, which I think is really cool, for the onboard water pump for your freshwater tank. It's all built in right into here. There's no need for switchboards and all this crazy stuff that I see in all these tiny houses. This is the best way to go about monitoring your tiny house holding tanks and also to be able to power your freshwater pump. All right, there's that. Some other cool components. These are some lights that we install in our tiny houses. They're little low voltage puck lights. They run at, I believe, three point, they've since changed the packaging, but I believe they run at a 3.5 milliamp, so really low. And we have about 20 or 30 of these in every single one of our houses and it runs on two of the two low voltage circuits. Then we got some out exterior lights. Here's something that kind of frustrates the hell out of me. So I know that this is not the most attractive light on the face of the planet, but I can guarantee you that the coach lights in things that you see on these houses, this big bulky light on the outside, that is not DOT approved. And it is dangerous. And if it falls off and hits somebody's car, then you're gonna have to pay for a windshield. And who wants to do that? So although this is not the most attractive light, this is the safest light and it's also very bright. Like watch. Yeah, that's why I brought a battery, so I can just illuminate. Just, I'm gonna brighten up your, your perspective today. See? Uh -huh. And then I'll also do this one too. But they're also, they're very bright, and they work really well, and you know, if it, if it didn't work well, the RV industry wouldn't use it. You know, and these are our, our puck lights for inside of our houses as well. Okay, 
So now I've talked about the lights. Oh, one thing really quick, sorry, before I cut off. These are light bars, and I will open up this wrapper really quick. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, so these are side marker lights. And these, are, this is a backlight that we put on the center of our trailer. You can get simpler ones, or you can install three of these on the back, just three of these little lights. But you want to make sure that you follow all DOT regulations as far as side marker lights, both on the bottom of your trailer and also the top. I see a lot of tiny houses that are built that have great perimeter lighting as far as around the base of the trailer, but nothing on the soffit. So here's the whole idea here. You ever drive down the road, and if you haven't now, you'll notice, but you have amber lights along the side. That's like a yellowish tint. And then on the back side, you'll see all red. The reason this is this way is so that in the dark, somebody does, has no idea what a tiny house looks like, but in the dark, they can identify which way it's moving and how big it is. It's really important. And I don't see a lot of tiny houses with the lights around the soffit, which is incredibly dangerous for other people on the road, especially at night. So I'm glad I didn't forget about these, but okay. So now I've talked about the lights, you've gotten the whole song and dance and all the cool stuff that we put in our houses. And I will say this, thank you so much for staying till the end. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, click the button below and I'll see you tomorrow.